Hi there, welcome to another exciting episode of Plane Tick. Today, we're embarking on a journey through time to explore the rich and fascinating history of Chinese tea. Did you know that tea has been a part of Chinese culture for nearly 5,000 years? That's right! According to legend, it all began in 2732 BC when Emperor Shenong stumbled upon tea leaves that had blown into his pot of boiling water. He found the flavor quite enjoyable and started researching the plant. Talk about a happy accident. Now, while this legend is probably more of a tall tale than a historical fact, it's a fun way to imagine how tea came to be. In reality, tea was initially valued for its medicinal properties rather than its taste. But as time went on, the Chinese began to appreciate tea for its everyday pleasure and refreshment. From the 4th to 8th centuries, tea's popularity in China skyrocketed. Tea plantations spread throughout the country, and tea merchants became wealthy and influential. Owning elegant tea wares became a symbol of status and wealth. The Chinese empire kept a tight grip on tea preparation and cultivation, even specifying that only young women were allowed to handle the precious leaves. They believed that the purity of these young ladies would prevent any contamination of the tea. Talk about high standards! But the love for tea didn't stop in China. The Japanese discovered this delightful beverage and brought it back to their homeland, where Buddhist monks used it to stay alert during their meditations. They even created their own version of tea called matcha, which is made from powdered green tea leaves. The Japanese were so enamored with Chinese culture that they modeled their own tea practices after the Chinese, which is why the two cultures have such similar tea traditions. In the 1200s, tea drinking became an integral part of Japanese culture, enjoyed by both royalty and commoners alike. The Japanese even created the tea ceremony, a silent ritual that combines artistic elements like tea, gardens, artwork, and floral design. The Chinese had their own version of the tea ceremony, too, emphasizing the spiritual nature of tea and its impact on community and harmony. As tea ceremonies grew in popularity, so did the art of ceramics. Both Japanese and Chinese cultures favored a rustic, imperfect aesthetic known as wabi-sabi, which celebrates the beauty of impermanence and imperfection. This influenced the design of the ceramic bowls and pots used in tea ceremonies. But tea's journey didn't stop in Asia. It eventually made its way to Europe, where the Dutch and Portuguese fell in love with the beverage. However, it was the Dutch who first negotiated a trade deal with China, the sole producer of tea at the time. Tea was expensive to import, making it a luxury enjoyed primarily by the upper class. In the 1660s, a Portuguese princess married into the British royal family, bringing her love for tea with her. At first, tea was enjoyed exclusively by the royals, but it soon found its way into the streets of Britain, sparking a tea mania that swept the nation. The British couldn't get enough of this delicious drink, but the high cost began to take a toll on the country's economy. Enter the East India Company, which had a monopoly on tea imports from China. When Britain banned this monopoly in the 1830s, the company had to find new ways to maintain its grip on the market. They started the Opium Wars and sent Scottish horticulturist Robert Fortune to China to steal tea secrets. Fortune posed as a Chinese citizen and discovered that all teas come from the same plant but undergo different oxidation processes. He also smuggled tens of thousands of tea plants and clippings back to the East India Company, which used this knowledge to establish competing tea farms in India, now the world's second largest tea producer. But tea isn't just a beverage in Chinese culture, it also plays a significant role in weddings. In traditional Chinese weddings, the groom's family would present the bride's family with gifts, often including tea, as a sign of good faith. If the bride's family accepted the offer, they would send a dowry in return. This tradition was solidified during the Song Dynasty from 960 to 1279 BCE, when tea became a staple in every bride and groom's dowry. Today, many Chinese couples still incorporate the traditional tea ceremony into their weddings. The bride and groom kneel and serve tea to their immediate families, symbolizing the joining of the two families. It's a beautiful and meaningful tradition that honors the importance of tea in Chinese culture. We hope you've enjoyed this deep dive into the fascinating history of Chinese tea. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more content.